questions? Yeah, let's go to questions. Yeah. Fred, what's the balance coming off a high like Sunday and then immediately having to go back and do it again against another top 25 team on the road? Yeah, I mean, obviously a very tough turnaround after coming off a very emotional game for our guys, and we had to put it behind us very quickly. We were in the gym early that next morning just based on our guys' class schedules. We were in the gym at 8 in the morning um, the day after the Creighton game. So. It uh, was one of those things. I talked to him about the importance of enjoying when you get a big win like that, but then being able to put it behind you quickly, have two days of prep. Uh, really, the first day was putting in the game plan, getting some guys some conditioning that needed it, and then today we went hard and, and had, a, had a good physical practice. That's what this game is going to be all about, is about toughness. That's what Indiana does. That's what they hang their hat on. A very good rebounding team, very physical, really get up and underneath you defensively, and they have great length. So it, it's going to be a tough challenge. Their last home game against North Carolina was, was very, very impressive with what they were able to do to take them out of any type of rhythm and just play with great physicality and toughness. So it's a great opportunity for our team, and we'll see what we're made of. It's, it's one of those things in this business. I've talked a lot about this. You've got to put those, whether it's a big emotional loss or a big emotional win, put it behind you, get ready for the next one, and that's from this point forward with our schedule the way it is, uh, the importance of doing that every time we step on the floor. With what Rutgers was able to do to them, talk about the, the physicality and what you guys did to create, and how much can you carry over that recipe from Sunday in, into this match? Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's the plan. You, you have to go out every time you step on the floor, and that's one thing I've talked about this group since we put it together, is I thought that it was a team that had some toughness and grit to them, and I think you saw that in full display for the full 40 minutes against Creighton and to be able to withstand runs in that building that is not easy to do with the firepower that they have on that roster so as much as anything the other night I just thought we were able to withstand and, and handle adversity well and we're going to face that again in uh, in Assembly Hall it, it's an incredible venue great arena ton of history in that building and they're filling it right now and it's as loud as any when uh, when that thing's full so we're going to have to come out with great energy uh, different game time playing at 8.30 uh, for our guys, but it's going to be very important, similar to what it was on s Sunday, Sunday, that we, you know, we have to find a way early uh, to withstand a run and match energy. And I thought we did that early in the Creighton game, and then we were able to dictate tempo uh, for the rest of that night. Coach Orgord, um, have you been able to stress to the team the importance of uh, free throws, especially when you're getting and playing the top, top tier teams in the conference? Yeah, we, we've we've been working at it, and it's it's something where you got to be able to take advantage and, and make your free ones. And obviously, early when you look, even going back to St. John's, I think we missed our first five free throws, including a one and one. In that situation, we went in with a seven-point lead at halftime. That's the difference in being up seven single digit and being up twelve or fifteen going into the break, where it could have been a completely different outcome. And it was good to see our guys knock them down in, in crunch time the other night. Sam hit two big ones for us. And uh, we've been we've been getting better. So you know, just continue to stress it, work on it, and especially when you're on the road, you know, you got to be able to step up and knock them down in uh, in, in a crazy environment. Fred, the fan base saw the video the other day where Trev gave the black shirts to some guys. Um, just sort of generally speaking, though, about the defense, could you talk about how this crew has, has fought in on that? Yeah, they they really have. We talked about that being our identity this year is is going out every night. Uh, the ball's not always going to go through the hoop. And you have to find a way in games like that. What did we make three threes the other night? And it was Wilhelm, Sam, and Juwan. <laughs> they, were, they were the ones that hit the threes. I mean, CJ and KC get shut out from behind the line, and, and we still found a way to win. So to be able to grind it out, I think we outscored them by 30 in the paint. And you have to have that. So it it is something that I'm really pleased with these guys. Emmanuel is bought in. You could argue that you look at Sam's stat line, you look at Derek's stat line, but what Emmanuel did to Nemhart in keeping him out of the paint, that kid has been living in the paint the first part of the season. So for a guy like Emmanuel to buy into that role every night, I think he had four points, four or six points, two transition baskets, but you know, to be able to take away their number one option and push their offense further up the floor, if Creighton's comfortable, it's they're impossible to stop. And just with Emmanuel ability to 
be a ball hawk up there and take away and push the offense out is a huge luxury to have. So it all starts with him. And yeah, that was pretty cool, I thought, when Trev gave him those black shirts. Stay on that point. That's one of the things I wanted to, to talk about. Do you feel that at this point in the season that the team is, has, has grasped the roles and they're, they're really bought into the full forms of those? Yeah, it, as you know, Eric, it's, it's so important to buy into the role that you're given. And we've had guys throughout the course of the year, and it always takes a little bit of time before those get established. But for this point of the season, still being early, I'm, I'm very pleased with how guys have accepted that. And Jawan, you look at the efficiency he played with last game, and he goes out and he's five for five, hits a big three, it was wide open. Those are the ones we want Jawan taking, not the contested ones. And for about a four or five minute stretch, he was just eating up the glass and, and got every, seemed like he got every rebound and Sam was in there. And when you look at that, I think that's seven in a row, if I'm not mistaken, winning the battle of the boards. And if you can do that consistently, you're going to give your team and you're going to give yourself a chance. And that's going to be important in Bloomington tomorrow night. We have to be able to compete on the glass. They've got such good, great length and they're so physical. We have to make first contact. If not, it's going to be a long night. We've seen plenty of Trace, Trace Jackson Davis over the years. What's going to be the key to make it like Yeah, he's, he just keeps coming back. And, you know, uh, but he, yeah, he's, he's a heck of a player. And, you know, you talk about, some of the great players over the years and you know taking away their dominant hand and they still find a way to get to it he's so good at getting to that left hand whether he goes right off the catch he's, he's really quick spin move or if he goes right he's going to find a way to get back to that left hand he's added a right uh, over the last couple of years but he still finds a way to get back to that left hand it's like when me and strickland used to try and guard ginobili take away his left he still found a way to get to his left and you know you just got to go out and try to make it as tough as possible, knowing that he's going to make tough shots. Uh, it's impossible for our team to simulate what he does, but uh, <clears throat> you know, just have to go out there and try to make it as difficult as possible. Well, it's <clears throat> the the the. I'll tell you, people ask, well, how was the bus ride home? I, I'll, I'll say it. The guys fell asleep, and, and you know, the coaches watch film. And it's been a group that's been very process oriented, and that's one thing that's been really impressive. Obviously, you know, there was a great celebration after that game, but <clears throat> they got over it quickly, and that's something that we really stressed. Uh, you know, it was a huge win for our program to be able to go and get uh, a win like that on the road. Uh, you know, in state, I know how much that the games like that means to our fans. Um, you know, so to find a way to get that one. But again, you have to find a way to get over it quickly. If we had a week, absolutely. You go out, you give them a couple days and, and really enjoy it and then get back to work. But we didn't have that. We had two days and then after Indiana, we got two days to prepare for a team that's playing maybe as well as any in the country right now with Purdue. So it's a heck of a stretch. So to be able to get that one, the importance of winning that game with the stretch that we have was so important. And it also was a confidence builder. When, you, when your guys know you can go on the road and beat a top 10 team like that. It's so important for your confidence, especially early in the year. We lost so many close ones early last year. If we win the Wisconsin and the Ohio State game early in the year, that might have been a completely different season a year ago, but it didn't happen and it's past, you know, we're past it now. But to get a game like that at this time of year is so important for the psyche of your guys. Coach, along those lines, Amy Williams' team's come off a big win as well. Have you had a chance to congratulate her? And how, how important do you feel yeah, I, uh, I texted Amy right right after I, I, uh, our game, and it sounds like they were refueling and they were watching the end of our game, and and you know just messaged back and forth with Amy. We've got a great relationship with her. I'll watch some of her practice. She'll watch some of ours, and it's a luxury to have that when you have a great relationship with other coaches in the athletic department. Uh, you know what John Cook is doing. I had a great conversation with him the night before the Boston College game. He was going to get a workout in. We were just finishing up a night practice. And, you know, just what he has done and the success that he's had. I tried to take a lot of the things that he has done as far as building uh, the culture with that team and, you know, being, uh, you know, compete for national championships every year. Uh, you know, Matt Rule sent me a really nice note after the game as well. So, you know, it's pretty cool when you have that type of camaraderie in your department. And, and I feel we have that here. I, even, you know, messages from, um, you know, from a lot of the other coaches in, in the department, Rhonda and, and, and Sean. And Paul, I mean, just getting messages from those guys, it means a lot. Right, to go back to Juwan real quick, you've obviously got a lot of 
obviously really seen his impact over the last five, six games here, but season as a whole, what's he really added to the group? Yeah, Jawan's toughness, that's that's the thing that we were most impressed with when when we uh, when we started recruiting Jawan. And, you know, one thing, I, I'm very close with one of the uh, assistant coaches at Alabama. He worked with me at Iowa State and in Chicago, and he talked to me a lot about Jawan. And I asked, I asked him, I said, what'd you guys do? Because I really noticed a shift to his left side on his shot. I said, what'd you guys do to try to correct that? And he said, we told him not to shoot. So, you know, when he came here, I, I tried to early on, you know, talk to him about the importance of really working on his balance. And he's become a, a reliable threat from the outside. Hit back-to-back -back threes a couple games ago and, and hit a huge one for us the other night against Creighton. So, you know, it's just, it, now it's about cleaning some things up, and I think Jawan's done that. You've seen the efficiency of Jawan's games have really improved as we've gone on. He was more of a volume shooter. Now he's taking better shots within the framework of the offense. He's slashing more. He's getting himself to the basket where he really is a good cutter and, and can really find himself opportunities to score in the half court with his cutting and slashing. But, you know, Jawan's just overall toughness has been huge for this team. His ability to rebound on both ends of the floor. He's become a better defensive rebounder than he has been in the past and still gives you the threat of going to get you extra possessions offensively. We really made the uh, conscious effort the other night, or decision I should say, to get back and try to limit Creighton in transition. And I don't think they had a transition basket in the first half. Uh, some of that was just the plan of sending more guys back uh, because they're a very good defensive rebounding team. And obviously they're one of the best in the country in transition. But you know, when Jawan is free to go, he's done a great job getting us extra possessions this year. Yeah, it's it's cool. I, I don't need to tell them that. I mean, they'll see it tonight when we go in for for a shoot around, and you know they see the banners up there, and you know Mike Woodson, obviously a legendary player in that program, uh, got a ton of respect for him. Played against his teams in the NBA, and he's just you know he's is his teams take on his personality. He's tough, and and his teams back that up. So you know, it's uh it's a great arena. I you know I look back at my career, I'm very fortunate to play and coach in Allen Fieldhouse and, you know, get the opportunity to go to Assembly Hall and, you know, some of the great venues around the country. Playing Hilton was, was a lot of fun uh, for me as well. Um, wasn't much fun for Strickland, but, you know, it was, it was great for us. But, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a cool place. Uh, but when that ball goes up, we got to be on point and we got to go out and play with great effort. Well, I just, uh, again, the makeup of this team, um, you know, last year we got we had a pretty good rhythm at the end of the season. But, you know, for this team to go out there and control the tempo as well as they did in that building, that is not easy to do. And it, you have to make sure you get off to a good start to do that. But, you know, just the poise that our guys played with, you, you have to be able to, um, you know, handle that for 40 minutes. And I just give our guys a ton of credit for going out there, playing the right way, playing unselfishly, getting the ball in the right guy's hands and defending for 40 minutes. I did not. No, that was pretty cool. Yeah, I saw the video before they posted it. But I, uh, yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, as far as I know, yeah, I wasn't there. I, I didn't get invited. I was never a guy that would have got a black shirt. <laughs>